me. Okay, I'll start. Well, I thought you were going to start. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Today we are planting. Right. Today we are planting honey locust. Today we are planting honey locust trees. Why we're doing it and why we think you should add them to your homestead. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renewed Homestead. I'm Ben. I'm Denise. And today we're... Sp <laughs> welcome back to the Renewed Homestead, everybody. I'm Ben. I'm Denise. And today we're planting a special tree. And these seeds take a little extra care before we can put them in the ground. So we're going to take you along and show you how we do that. And what is it we're planting? We are planting honey locust trees. Now, honey locust trees um, are a nitrogen fixer. They are part of the legume family. And I know that you've heard about Billy planting black locust trees, but we are actually going to be planting honey locust trees. Now we do have some black locust trees mingled in, but we want to do honey locust. And we want to do this for a couple of different reasons. There is a difference between honey locust and black locust. Now, Honey locusts come, most of the time they are really, really spiky. I mean, they've got a horrible, horrible thorns. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably not saying that right, spiky, but they've got horrible thorns. Yeah. So we got a thornless variety. And the advantage to honey locust is their roots will actually put nitrogen into the soil and other plants do not have to touch their roots. That's everything that we've been researching and reading. Black locust trees also take nitrogen from the air and put it into the soil. But typically with black locust, they need to actually be touching the roots of the other plants. So they need to be inter in intermingled, so to speak. So with the honey locust, um, it doesn't necessarily need to be intermingled, number one. Number two, bees absolutely love it. And I guess I'm gonna give you a few different reasons. Yeah. Um, and thirdly, plants, it creates these big seed pods and animals absolutely love to eat them. So it's going to be additional fodder that we can grow on the homestead. So not only is it going to feed our plants, it's going to feed the bees. It can also go to feed some of the livestock. So this is just one of the many reasons that we're planting the honey locust tree. All right, a little off-camera discussion. The honey locust and black locust remind me of the mesquite trees we had in Arizona. And the Native Americans used to use the, the pods they would get everywhere. They'd, they'd grind those down, and that's what they made their flour out of and made bread. So I asked Denise, I said, are these, are they, I know animals will eat them, but are the pods edible like the mesquite tree? She just looked it up, and sure enough, they are. So not only can the animals eat it, but we could collect the pods, dry the seeds out, grind them down, and make okay. our own flour. And I know the mesquite tree, it's almost sweet. I, I don't know that I ever had any of it, but yeah. everybody else. You did. I did. I've made a couple of recipes. Oh, that's with right. It. Yes. Well, yeah, but that's what other stuff. Anyway, <laughs> they tend to be sweet from my memory and from what I have heard. So we'll have to see how these, the honey locust is. But and we'll take you along if we, when we get to yeah. a point, it's going to be a little while because obviously these are going from seed. They're, they're still in seed um, form. Yes. But, now these, these can get big. Um, yeah. We are not going to allow them to get that big, but they yeah. can grow, I want to say 66 to 98 feet. So yeah. they, they are big trees. We are obviously not going to allow them to get that big. And I'm sure you've seen it at Permapastures Farm, but a lot of times they'll cut off like parts of the tree and then that forces more of that nitrogen down and more um, root growth. So we'll be doing some of that as well. We'll obviously be an allow, allow it to grow those seed pods so that we can uh, feed it to our animals. Um, obviously we'll try it as well, but we're not going to allow it to get nearly as big as, uh, <laughs> as what it can. No, no we don't, where these are gonna be, we don't want them to shade out our other desirable plants. So yes, and, and we're gonna definitely. do a food forest update soon just to show you uh, what we're doing, how we're doing it, um, what we're growing, um, and how far we've gotten and, so far. And all your progress, yes. So Lots of progress, but anyway, so let's show you how we 
take care of these seeds and then we'll go out and plant them in the ground. So, ready to go? Ready to go. Let's do it. Good. Yep. All right, in order to plant honey locust seeds, you first need to scarify the seed. Now you're going to hear two terms typically with regards to seeds, stratifying and scarifying. Stratifying is where they need cold weather to propagate. So a lot of times you'll plant those seeds in the fall, let them overwinter, and then they're able to propagate because they froze. Some people mimic this by using their refrigerator, usually by putting it in between moist napkins. Scarifying is different. Scarifying is where the seed is contained in a hard shell. So if you look here, you can see the seed, it's a very shiny coat. This is a shell around the seed to protect it. Now, what normally happens in nature is animals will eat the seed. It'll go through their digestive tract, rough it up, they'll poop it out, and then the seed starts to grow. We obviously aren't putting these through our animals. So we are going to show you a trick. We're going to be using sandpaper. Now, other people use boiling water. So you can actually put boiling water over it. You wait till the seeds are two to three times their size, and then you're able to plant them from there. We do not have a lot of room in the RV. The last thing we need is more things in the RV. So we're actually going to use sandpaper. You want to be careful. You only want to scrape off the very outer layer. You don't want to damage the seed. If you go too deep, you could damage the seed. It is not going to grow for you. So we're gonna show you how we use the sandpaper to scarify, and then we'll go ahead and plant the honey locust. So we're going to be very gentle. We just need to get the outer shell off to mimic what would happen in nature. You can see I'm being very gentle. Whoops, don't wanna lose the seed. And I'm just looking to see, so you can start to see that's already starting to come off there. And I apologize for my hands, guys. I have been pulling and pounding fence posts and my nails are an absolute wreck. Homestead life. Yeah. And the old saying, any port in a storm, well, Yes, we're doing this on the hood of the car because any flat surface on the homestead that doesn't have stuff piled on it, we're using it. And well, you can see right here, you can see how the shiny's off and you can see right there. So we are just about there. That when we tried to, tried to record down by the barn, the guineas were atrociously loud. So we moved up by the house. And I think you said this is a 60 or 70 grit sandpaper, Ben? Uh, 60 or 80 grit, yeah. Yeah. All right, so you can see, and I want to show you the difference between this seed and this seed. So you can see, do you see right there where we've gotten the surface off? Now remember... Sorry, it's not zooming in very well. Okay, so now we're, we're using sandpaper and, we, and Denise talked about how a seed will pass through an animal's digestive system and those, those stomach acids will, will, you know, remove that shiny outer coat, that protective coat of the seeds so that the nutrients can get in. Well, the other way that happens in nature is that a seed will fall into a stream or particularly in Arizona, we have dry stream beds and when we get flash floods, that seed gets tumbled with rocks and smashed in between and that's how it breaks open. Some some seeds in the desert will sit for decades before they actually start growing. That's just the nature of, uh, of the hardiness of a, of a desert plant. But anyway, so we're, we're using sandpaper to mimic that and let's go get those planted. It's rare we see any kind of air traffic, let alone two. Must be a sale at the donut shop. All right, so those that have been with us for a while, um, you know how we plant trees. We do uh, like a sheet mulching method where we have compost, 
we have cardboard, we have mulch. Now the compost is obviously going to feed the seed. The cardboard is going to help protect it from grasses, but also feed the worms. And then the mulch is obviously going to make sure it keeps moisture in um, while it also continues to feed. Now we already have compost down uh, because I've been putting, and as you'll see in the food forest video, we've been sheet mulching the food forest. So we already have some compost down. Decker! Decker's licking the bone sauce off the trees. <laughs> So for those of you wondering about bone sauce, yes, it's great for deer. We've even seen some great uh, uh, results with rabbits. Dogs but, love but it. But for chalupas, chalupa. Yes, that's his nickname. Yes. Decker, but Decker eats just about everything. So. And, and he's over there while we're trying to record and he's licking the bone sauce off the tree. Thank you so much, so Decker. Now that we've been interrupted. We, we, I think, where been, was we've, I? We've been Decker bombed. Oh, talking about the sheet mulch and I've already got compost down. Um, so, uh, you know, but we're going to obviously add a little bit more um, compost in just to make sure this, the seed is fed. Honey locusts are, are pretty stout trees. They grow in a variety of different soils, which is another great reason to grow them. Um, but we want to obviously give it the best start we possibly can. Yep. We've got the goods, so take a little bit of the cardboard out. Oh, there's some of the tape that didn't. Yeah, now. I do try to get all of the tape off on the cardboard. Um, every once in a while, I will miss some. But one of the great things about tape, and this is more of that cardboard tape um, that's a little more natural than regular box tape. But the great thing about this is this will actually float to the top and allow you just to peel it right out of the ground while the cardboard stays. Well, what's left of the cardboard? I mean, what's left? Yes. I mean, this hasn't been in that long, and it's already breaking down very quickly. And you can see the worms right underneath that work doing their job too. So. So like we said, we don't have to go very deep. These are seeds. I'm just trying to loosen the soil to give it a good start here. And... Then you want to grab another handful of the... Yep. Oh, I left the other bucket down there with the mulch, but there's plenty of mulch right here. So. And for the, those... Uh, Folks out there that are fans of Oak Island, um, seeds, top pocket find. She doesn't watch it. I Basically, don't watch when, it. When they find something good, you know, with the metal, the guy that does the metal detecting, if uh, they find something good, oh, that's a top pocket find rather than in his pouch. So that's where I've got my seeds in my top pocket. Anyway, seed in the ground. Let's get this done. We got we got work to do and we're losing daylight. So what, about an inch deep? Not even that? Yeah. All right, there it is. Oh, well, don't. What? Yeah, I wasn't... we need to leave room for uh, the name tag too. Oh yes, the name tag. So grab the rock. And we're just putting the rock here for now just so we know exactly where we planted it so we can put the name tag in. Readily accessible markers. Yeah, that too, and so we don't step on it. If there's a, if there's a rock, we try not to step near the rock because we know something's planted near it. Yes. All right, we've got two more to plant um, and then we'll go ahead and close y'all out. So this is part of the food forest that I, I have some compost down, but I haven't had a chance to get the cardboard down or the wood mulch down. But I want you to notice something here. Let me make sure y'all are in frame. All right, behind Ben to his right is a tree. And right over here, is also another tree, that's a small tree. So we are planting this uh, by our trees so that way the honey locust tree will actually help feed these trees. And remember, we are going to be cutting this back so it's not going to get huge, so we do not have to worry about spacing it like you normally would. Yeah. And that's the tree that's now lacking some bone sauce as Decker was enjoying it. So, right here? Right there. Yeah. Ooh. Maybe not. Listen to that. Lots of rocks under here, so maybe let's move over just a little bit here. Because while they are tough, we don't want them to have to compete with trying to get through a rock when they're young and get blown over or whatever. We are in the mountains. There yeah, are well lots that, of rocks. And that, that is a problem. We were talking about mesquites earlier uh, in Arizona. They are a desert plant, so people use them in landscaping and they get a constant supply of water. 
those roots don't get deep. They go very wide and shallow and we get those haboobs and, and dust storms that come through. Those trees are down all the time. If y'all haven't seen a haboob, it is, it is quite the issue. Yeah. It is a massive wall of dust that you cannot see. I mean, you can't even see your hand in front of your face at times. And, and I've, we've all, we've driven in those and that is not, you want to talk yeah. about it. It's like a snowstorm. Yeah, it's, like, it's like a really bad snowstorm blizzard without snow. It's yep. just all yeah, dust. You, you can't see even the, the, the brake lights ahead of you. It's, it's dangerous. People it get is killed dangerous. Them, yeah. I'll, I'll actually uh, see if I can find a picture of one so y'all can see it is, it is absolutely crazy. Yeah. It's, it is funny. One of my coworkers was, when I lived out there, he was there from New York and um, and I saw one coming. and I called him up at, at his hotel. I'm like, Larry, go look outside. And he, he walks out, what the, f in New York terms, is that? And I was like, that is a haboob. <laughs> I said, welcome to Arizona. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go grab some wood mulch. Top pocket. Somewhere. They're not very big. The size of a pea, basically. Put that there. All right, seed is in the ground. Now we need some cardboard, right? Oh, yes, what are we doing wood mulch for? I forgot the cardboard. <laughs> Good thing I'm here to keep her in check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd go rogue on our uh, food forest. Next thing you know, we'd have all kinds of plants growing everywhere. Oh, wait, that's me. All right, after further consideration, we're gonna hold off on planting that third seed and that's a whole story for a whole other video and we'll take you along when we do that. But we've got the other two seeds in the ground. And we've got, we'll be planting more of them um, with the other oh, trees that we've planted. Definitely, we've got about 24 seeds. Obviously we're not gonna plant them all, but guessing that some won't come up, we wanna make sure we have some growing. And, mm -hmm. can... and we wanna feed those, just like with the Siberian <laughs> pea shrub, we want to feed the plants in the food forest. Yep, yeah. and we'll be putting more comfrey in here too. Absolutely. Soon, soon. Yes. But the ground is still very cold, so it's not a lot of lot of workable area yet. But it's warming up fast. So yes. All right. Anything else? Yeah, I think we're good. And uh, let us know if you've planted honey locust trees. Um, what nitrogen fixers you have planted? There are a lot to choose from. We like the honey locust from the standpoint that not only does it feed. Our plants, it can feed us, it can feed our animals. The bees absolutely love it. And as we stated, that nitrogen will get into the ground and it doesn't necessarily need to be touching the roots of other plants. And we did get a thornless variety because those thorns yeah. are, woo, I'll show yeah. you, I'll, I'll find a picture of um, a honey locust seed with the, with the thorns there. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and two, when you buy commercial fertilizer, what's the number one ingredient? nitrogen so True. if this is natural and we're not paying anything more than what we paid for the seeds all the better but uh, she was asking for comments let us know if you've ever had honey locust yeah, pod bread or, or anything if you've ever used it I, i'm real curious because i know it's a it's a thing with uh, mesquite so i wonder if there's anybody i i'll i'll check and see if there's anybody around us that has some honey locust and maybe we could try to make some flowers so if we do find somebody that has a couple honey locust trees that yeah. they'd allow us to uh, experiment we'll yeah. bring you along when we do that that would <laughs> which, be cool which if these are anything like the mesquite trees the pods are everywhere so they would probably gratefully say yes please come rake up yeah. all you want so Mes we'll see mesquite trees are prolific <laughs> to messy. say the least they are messy but that's good fodder so. great a great tree though it is. it is a great tree oh, yeah. for the desert. Oh, absolutely. So anyway, all right. Well, thanks for hanging with us <laughs> as, as disjointed as we are, but that's, that's how it is around here. <laughs> so anyway, give us that thumbs up. Make sure you share us and subscribe and be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. God bless. See you on the next video. Bye, Bye all. Bye everybody.